Because some of you have to see it before you touch it, feel it, sign the contract, take the step. You have to see that the opportunities are all around you. And not get stuck and blinded with what you're feeling, with what you're seeing, with with, with, what other people are saying. No, 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 no. You are looking with eyes of faith. That because God's promises are not lies, I can stand on that. I can live in faith in victory. I don't have to live like everybody else that's talking about defeat and talking about sad things and it's always a sappy story and I always have to take the violin every time I hear them. No, no, no. I can walk with joy and walk with victory knowing that my God listens to me when I call. That when there are issues, I can go back to the word of God and see that the opportunities are all around me and see that there is an open heaven over my life. But it starts with me understanding that there are opportunities all around you. You just have to ask God to reveal it. And like I said, they're always in plain sight. Sometimes the solutions are right in front of you. You just have to look one more time. You just have to try one more time. You just have to take a step back and evaluate. And then you're like, oh my gosh. It was here the whole time. It's like when you lose your keys and you go crazy and they were right there the whole time. I don't know if that's ever happened to you. It drives me nuts. Like, where's my key? You know, you get all crazy about it. You go to World War III with your spouse over a key. But it's hidden in plain sight. It's it's right in plain sight. Anything that God is promising his people, he never hides it. In fact, he's always revealing it. It's just us that have to go for the taking. The solution to the king's problem was, it wasn't just, it was opening the window and shooting. It was also seeing Aram. And even though he saw Aram, Elisha said, open the east window and shoot. For some of you, this is an encouragement that Elijah's getting him to understand. I'm trying to get you to understand that when Aram, the issue that's right in front of you, is facing you head on, can I tell you something? Shoot anyways. Try anyways. Believe anyways. Pray anyways. Why? Because victory comes to your house. It's your job to face it, not to run from it. We don't run from anything. We face it head on. Because I guarantee you that king, in his panic mode, would have hid. But Elisha said, no, man, open the window and shoot the arrow. Open the window and shoot the arrow. Look out the window. Look out the window. Some of, I heard this preacher say, and I thought it was pretty clever. He said, some of you are looking at walls instead of windows. Some of you are stuck on the wall instead of the window. Church, you have to understand something. That your faith determines your destiny. Your faith determines your destiny. It determines your destiny. Second thing is this. It's not that all opportunities are all around you, but that God will help you, wants to help you on your journey. The Bible says in, uh, was it verse, verse 15. Let's go to verse 15 one more time. He said, get a bow and some arrows. And the king did as he was told. Elisha told him, put your hands on the bow. And Elisha laid his own hands on the bow. Then he commanded, open the east window, and he opened it. Then he said, shoot, so he shot an arrow. Elisha proclaimed, this is the Lord's arrow, an arrow of victory over Aram. For you will completely conquer the Aramaeans at Aphek. Then he said, now pick up the other arrows and strike them against the ground. So the king picked them up and struck the ground three times, but the man of God was angry with him. You should have struck the ground five or six times, he exclaimed. Then you would have beaten Aram until it was entirely destroyed. Now you will be victorious only three times. When I want, why I share this again is, that, is this. The Bible says that Elisha gives the king instructions. Like we just said, he says, open the window, 
grab the bow and arrows and shoot your shot. This isn't for dating for some of you, all right? It's shoot your shot. He says, but here's the thing that people miss all the time. And it's, it's so important. The Bible says that when Elisha tells him to put, to not only listen, but put this into action. The king listened to Elisha, but here's what Elisha did. Elisha puts his hand on the king's hand and then they shoot it together. In other words, there are things that you can only do with an anointing. And when you don't have the anointing on you, you won't overcome what's against you. That when the hand, you need the hand of God to overcome what you're facing. You can't do it in your own strength. You need the Holy Spirit. You need the power of God. So many people forget that it's because of God that that's where they're at. That's why they're the, where they're at. So many people forget that if God's hand was on your life, if you would allow God to, be, to participate with you in your decisions, you would see victories. The king had, could not do it on his own. Elisha puts his hand on the kings and then they shoot it together. See, because when me and you do things in our own strength, we only experience partial victories. When me and you try to do things in our own wisdom, with our own hands, because we, it seems right to us in the moment, and sometimes we make impulsive decisions because we're panicking. And we're stressed out. And because we're stressed out, we think we have to do something now and quick. And sometimes they're good ideas and sometimes they're terrible ideas out of impulse. The Bible says that he shoots the arrow and then he tells a man, you're about to have this great victory. And then he tells him, okay, strike the ground. But what does the Bible say? That he strikes the ground three times. But what the Bible, but what we see here is that Elisha never told him to stop striking the ground. That means that when God gives you an instruction for your life, he wants to help you, but he can't participate in something that is partial. Because partial obedience is still disobedience. I can't obey God for some things and I can disobey him for, no, no. He wants full obedience. God wants to help you. He wants to see you succeed. So many people are like this king. They strike the ground three times. Because so many people, what happens is they, 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 do, they obey God. But here's the thing. They live with enough when God's actually asking you to live with success. They obey enough to get somewhere instead of living a life of success. I obeyed God to strike the ground, but I didn't obey him till he said stop doing. I made a decision to get me through the door, but I didn't obey him enough to get me to the building. That's a cross. I, you know, there are certain things there's certain things that God's trying to get you to understand, church. That he wants, here's the thing, he wants to help you. God wants to bless you. God wants to try to do whatever he can to get with your faith in him. To interlock, because faith and obedience are hand in hand. Faith and obedience are just, they're one. I obey God and I believe God. I obey him and I believe him. I obey him and I believe him. Church, God wants to, he wants to help you. This king, Elisha was trying to help him. He didn't want the king to be defeated. He didn't want the nation of Israel to be defeated. He wanted it. He wanted to bless them. I'm here to encourage you, church. Don't act on anything without God's hand. Don't act on anything without the leading of the Lord. God works in your responses, but he also has to understand, you have to understand something. It's me that I need to, I need to listen to him. Here's some, a practical tip. If you don't feel peace on it, don't do it. 
If the peace of God is not reigning in your life, don't make that decision. Don't take that step. Don't purchase whatever it is. If the peace of God is not there, then maybe you need to take a step back. Because even when it's faith, there's always peace behind it. Because for, you have to understand, faith, sometimes, faith is me stepping and not knowing what's next and trusting God. And that in itself sometimes can get a little scary. Can get a little like, oh man, God, are you sure, God? Or this was this Taco Palenque at 3 a.m.? You know, God, are you sure, God? There's those moments, but even when you have a true faith and when you really hear the voice of God and the leading of the Holy Spirit in your life, even in those moments where you're taking those steps and it seems like, oh God, are you sure? There's like a peace about it. It's a supernatural thing. You won't doubt, you won't stress out about it. If you're constantly stressed out and anxious about these things, then maybe you need to take a step back and say, God, is this really what you want me to do? Is this really what, what you want us as a family dynamic to, is this really what you need us to do? Anything that's outside of the peace of God is not of God. But God does want to help. And help looks different for every single person. Comes in all shapes and sizes, but it's help. <laughs> 